I'm Devin. And I'm Zach. And we're supervisors at the Clemson University Mechanical Engineering Student Shop. Today we're going to be using this video to walk you through the green certification. It'll show you how to use saws, drills, and other hand tools. Once you've received your part from the instructor, you can use the tools you see here to lay out your part. Here we have an angled block. It's a 90 degree angle block sitting on a surface plate. You can see we have a variety of different surface plates here. We have a metal one, a couple stone. Make sure to keep your surface plates free of different chips and things. If your part is not sitting flush on the surface plate, you're going to get uneven results. We also have a height gauge here with a scribe on it. Make sure that before you use your height gauge that it's zeroed out. You can zero out your height gauge just by turning the dial here on the front. All right. First thing we're going to do is cover our part with layout fluid. You can find the layout fluid in the second drawer under layout tools. You don't need too much. When you finish coating your part with layout dye, it should look something like this. Before we begin to lay out our part, however, I'd like to talk a little bit about the measuring part of height gauges and dial calipers. Here I'm holding a six inch dial caliper. It has a scale on the bottom that goes from zero to one uh, to six inches. Those inches are further broken up into uh, tenth of an inch increments. The dial here further breaks that up into thousands. For more information, you can refer to the user handbook. I've already set our height gauge to a half inch, which is one of the first measurements for our part. It will give us one of the center lines for these three holes you can see here. I'm going to take my piece and place it against this 90 degree angle block and then take my scribe which has already been set and scrape it across the front of the piece. When I'm all done you can see that I have a nice clear line that shows the center line for three of the holes. You can continue doing this for several of your measurements. When you're done, you should have a piece that looks like this. As you can see, there are several crosshair. These are used to center your holes. Also, we have a diagonal line, which will be the last cut we make on the part. To get this, you, would, you should mark both your height and your width and then use a ruler to give you a straight edge between them. You can then use a scribe to mark the part. Be sure that when you're done working in your area that there's no layout die on any of the surface plates or tools. If you do make a mess, you can use layout die cleaner here. You can just spray it on top of your surface plate and then use a rag to wipe away the layout die. So once you've finished laying out your part in the office, you can come in here and begin drilling the holes in your part. Drill bits can be found in this cabinet. And before you actually drill any holes, you'll need to refer to the drawing to see what size hole needs to be drilled. Here we see that it says 0.375 inches. So in order to def uh, determine the fraction equivalent and the size of drill bit, you refer to the drill and tap chart on the wall here. The drawing indicates that most of the holes you're going to be drilling are through holes, which uh, can be the, the drill bit size can be determined by looking at the measurement indicated on the drawing. 
then you would refer to the drill and tap chart shown here on the wall. So the drawing indicates a decimal value of the diameter of the hole. This chart is split up into mainly three columns, which are then subdivided into three smaller columns. On the leftmost column is the fraction equivalent of the diameter. The middle column is the decimal equivalent of the diameter. And the right column is the tap size that would correspond to that diameter. So for the tap holes that you're going to have to drill, for example, the 3 8 inch uh, drill and tap, 3 8 16th, you would refer to the chart again, and you'd look for 3 8 16th, which is right here, and you'd move over and see that that would require a 5 16 inch drill bit. So once you've determined the size of the drill bit that you're going to need, you'll probably want to verify that that is indeed the size. You can do this using a micrometer, also commonly referred to as a mic. Uh, for instruction on how to read and measure drill bits or anything really uh, using a micrometer, you can refer to the shop manual or you can just ask a supervisor for help. A lot of times the size will be listed somewhere uh, towards the base on the drill bit, but often that reading is illegible, so you'll want to verify it using a micrometer. Before you begin drilling into your part, you'll either want to use a punch or a center drill to prevent any type of walking. Right now we're going to use a punch, which can be found in this cabinet. So you'll grab one of these and a hammer and come over here and line it up to the best of your ability on the intersection of your two uh, lines that you etched in when you were laying out and you'll give it a quick to indicate where your hole will start. In this cabinet we have a variety of clamps that you can use to secure your part to the drill press. I'll just grab a couple here. So you'll take your part and put it on the drill press and you'll begin securing the part to it. You want to make sure that the part is flush with the drill press to ensure that you get a, an even square cut and there are a variety of ways that you can move this drill press around to adjust so that you can get just the right hole. You'll then take your drill bit put it in the chuck, tighten it down using the chuck key, and you're ready to begin drilling. Here is your on switch, and you're just going to use this handle and bring it down through slowly but surely. clear out all of the debris and unclamp it and now you have the first hole in your part. So after you're done drilling it's not uncommon to find that your part has burrs. You can eliminate that using what is called a deburring tool. This can be found in the blue room, or you can ask a supervisor if you have trouble finding it. You'll just give the hole a few passes with the deburring tool, and it scrapes those burrs right off. Do it on both sides. And that helps give your part a really nice aesthetic look and uh, makes it look nice and finished. Now that you've drilled your hole, you're ready to begin tapping it. You can find the taps in this cabinet right here. This case is labeled standard tap and die. And this hole is a 3816 tap. And you can just look for that. They're labeled in this 
in this case. You then take this and you will need a tap handle and also a tap guide. This tap guide is one that you will make in your blue certification. Before you do this, you'll need to secure your part somehow. Right now I'm securing it to the drill press. Uh, depending on the part and depending on what you're comfortable with, you may secure it to a vise or something else instead. You'll take your tap and put it in the tap handle and secure it. Now you're ready to begin tapping the hole. You want to try and ensure that you're coming down into this hole as vertically as possible, so check it and verify that. And then you'll apply some pressure and twist. You're gonna do two rotations forward clockwise and then you'll do one rotation backward and that helps pull any materials uh, that it's cutting out of the hole. And now you have a tapped hole in your part. Once you're finished, please be sure to clean up your work area to make sure that the shop is left cleaner than in the condition that you found it. If you broke any drill bits during the process, you can place them in this container here and they will be left for a supervisor to sharpen sometime in the future.